In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, let's take a moment to call to mind our sins on this Gaudate Sunday. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, For among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and gladness. For among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and gladness. For among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with joy and exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and Holy One of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice exhortation. Do not falsely accuse anyone. And be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water. But one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, it's quite interesting today that in our readings today, especially our first and second reading, we are told to rejoice. But the thing is, it's not a suggestion. It's not an invitation. It is a command. It's an imperative. You must rejoice. God is commanding us to rejoice. And this may seem kind of strange because we can think, well, how can I be commanded to rejoice? Emotions come and go. How can I be commanded to be happy? That seems really messed up. But yet God is commanding us to rejoice because at the end of the day, why emotions sometimes are beyond us and are circumstantial, we can do a lot in our lives to make sure we have the best chances for rejoicing. And the way we do this in reality is to follow the prescripts of our gospel reading today from John the Baptist. You know, the people are asking him, what shall we do? Be generous to the poor. Those who do tax collection, what shall we do? Don't take more than what's prescribed. Practice your tax collection with justice. Soldiers asked him, don't exhort, don't falsely accuse, and be satisfied with your wages basically telling the people you need to be generous and you can't take advantage of people. You can't live a shifty, shady life. And quite frankly, my brothers and sisters, this command to rejoice today is to leave behind that shadiness and shiftiness that is within us and to live by righteousness and justice. And in this way, we are able to rejoice and we have the best chances of rejoicing. In fact, we see in our first reading from Zephaniah, Shout for joy, sing joyfully, O Israel. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. Fear not, O Zion, do not be discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings on festivals. So it's because that God is singing joyfully, because God is rejoicing over us, because God has removed the punishment. God has removed our misfortunes. 
that we can rejoice. So like I said a little bit earlier, oftentimes our emotions are based on circumstances. Well, the circumstance most important in our lives is how God sees us. And if God has removed all that, which can cause desolation and depression, we are called to rejoice. And we have no reason not to rejoice unless we choose, if you will, shadiness and shiftiness. So too, in our second reading today, from St. Paul to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, just in case you missed it. Rejoice. Your kindness shall be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds against anything that keeps us from rejoicing in Christ Jesus. So here again, by rejoicing, our kindness will be known. And we don't have to have anxiety because by prayer and petition, our requests are known to God. That is how we have the peace. That is how we remain in God so that our hearts and minds may be guarded against everything that is not of rejoicing. I think sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we get it wrong. We forget that we need to guard ourselves against everything that keeps us from peace, like I said last weekend, that keeps us from rejoicing. We need to protect ourselves, defend ourselves, defend ourselves from choices, maybe from circumstances and people that keep us from that peace in God, that keep us from rejoicing. And we need to guard ourselves from those thoughts that weigh us down, that cause us anxiety, that keep us from rejoicing. We need to choose to rejoice as we are commanded to, that we may live the gospel in great joy and peace, that we don't feel like we need shadiness and shiftiness. If our peace is not grounded in God, our rejoicing will not be authentic. And if our rejoicing is not in the Lord, we are going to run out of steam really, really quickly. This is where we need to center our lives in Christ. As we read in the Gospel Antiphon, the Alleluia Antiphon from Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. And this is our greatest rejoicing, that in peace and our personal rejoicing, we get to bring glad tidings to the poor. We get to lift them up. It was very beautiful yesterday. We uh, got a $1,000 grant from the Christian radio station in Hatley. And one of their uh, producers came to get to know us, to interview some of us, and to work with us. And the one thing he noted right away was the joy. The joy we had with our people. And I got to admit, it was so much fun yesterday in the snow because we got to play in the snow. And let me explain. We had a lot of people who were not driving all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive cars. I tell you, going up the little hill at St. Bernard's with a couple inches of fresh snow on it was truly a remarkable example of how wonderful all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is. Because you could tell immediately the cars that did not have it. It was so clear. And there were a few people driving that, frankly, did not have winter driving lessons as teenagers. Let's just put it that way. And they didn't quite know how to get up the hill. And so I would kind of waddle down, make sure I didn't fall, and I would tell them, you know, you got to keep things straight, you got to gun it from the beginning, and you got to get some speed up so that when you get to the hill, the momentum will carry you through. Keep the wheel straight, small adjustments, and power on through. And it was so much fun because we had a few of these ladies, Hispanic ladies, obviously don't drive in the snow very much. And they'd look at me like I was crazy. I'm like, you can do it. You can do it. You got this. And I'd be cheerleading them. And then they kind of go off. And they get to the top. And they'd be so happy by the time I got up to the top that they made it. But isn't that a good lesson for us to rejoice always in the Lord? We see that icy, snowy hill in front of us. We despair. We have anxiety. I can't make it. It's not going to work. We fall into desolation. But yet the Lord tells us, just get going. Have hope that you'll make it through. Get your speed up. Don't make huge judgments. Stay in the faith. 
and keep your will straight and it will see you through. So often we doubt that we can rejoice. So often we doubt that we can have joy each and every day. But my brothers and sisters, this is why we have Gaudate Sunday. This is why I'm wearing pink right now. Because Gaudate Sunday is also an imperative. Jesus is telling us in Latin, rejoice. I command you to rejoice. And today we have that command to rejoice. Yeah, we can choose not to follow it. But this is not a suggestion. This is not some good advice. We are commanded to rejoice because that is the only way that we prepare well for heaven here on earth. It's the only way that we can truly fulfill these mandates in the gospel reading. It's the only way that we can guard our hearts and minds against all that is not of Christ Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, as we await more snowstorms, let us remember our winter driving skills. But also, each and every day, let us remember our skills as Catholics, that we may always live this most important command of the Lord. Rejoice. I was thinking yesterday that if priesthood doesn't work out, or if you guys stop paying me, I could always become a driving instructor in the winter. I could probably make some good money doing that. I'm just not going to use my car. (laughs) And let us profess that faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, let us first call to mind our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that as a church we may help all, especially as we bring glad tidings to the poor, to rejoice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, those who have fallen away from the regular practice of their faith, that we may all come to rejoice in the Lord, that we may live our faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families, that we may always help one another in a deeper peace, that we may encourage one another in rejoicing and nothing less. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day. We pray in a special way for Arvin Affelbeck, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to always rejoice that in following this most fundamental command, we may truly recognize the truth of your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, and see how peace leads to rejoicing and how we are called to truly found our lives on you through the rock, the church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed, his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angel and archangel, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, These gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace the prayers of this family whom we, you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And this week I'll be in Chicago, so most likely no YouTube masses this week as I'm going to study for my doctorate. So anyways, God bless all of you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.